Hi everyone, this is Lisa from Canine Clips Dog Grooming Tips and this is Buddy and Buddy is a Yorkshire Terrier crossed with a Maltese dog breed and he's in for his full groom today and I'm just going to show you all that, how I do that process. So um, he is going to be getting a three and three quarter inch blade on him today um, to clean up his body and then uh, clean up his face and everything else. So his owner um, has seemed to give him a little bit of a trim here, so he's a little bit shorter there. So I am going to just blend everything to match his length there. So, and the owner did want him to keep him a little bit longer still, so we're going to go with the three and three quarter inch blade. Um, I'm going to start with the blade because he's quite thick, so I do want to get that off before the bath, and then I'll finish trimming him up as well after. Um, you can do it both ways. I have shown where I actually um, do the face, feet, and bum, nails, and ears, and then bath them, and then do the body with the clippers, because it does keep the clippers a little cooler. Um, but you can do it both ways. Just If you are doing it this way, you want to make sure you have lots of clippers on hand as well to keep those clippers nice and cool. And this will dull out your blades a little bit faster as well. Just because, of course, you're cutting dirty hair. But generally not too much faster. Okay, come on, buddy. You stand up. <laughs> he wants to relax. Okay, so he's going to be one that doesn't want to stand. So I'll just kind of work with them here. It makes it a little harder when they don't want to stand. Come on. And as you can see, I don't use any restraints when I groom. I don't feel it's necessary. There are some more difficult dogs that I groom, and you can check that out. And again, I don't use any restraints even with them. It does take me a little bit longer. And I do have some different techniques that I use with them um, to hold them. But it's all done with just my hands. Um, dogs that bite, I do like to use cones. But I don't like to use any muzzles, so I don't want to infringe on their breathing at all. That way with a cone they can still move around, but they can breathe freely. And of course the muzzles still let them breathe, but I find uh, it impacts or impedes on their breathing a little bit. So, especially when they're nervous like this and they're panting, it's a little hard to have a muzzle on a bit for them. Okay. And he might stand for me later, but right now he doesn't want to. So right now I'm just trying to get the bulk off anyways. Let's see if I can get them a little bit here. Come on. Half standing. It's okay. It's okay, bud. It's okay. a little bit stiff there with his leg. So I might have to use the scissors on there just because he is being so stiff. And he does have some matting on the inside of his front leg here. 
So I am just going to switch to a number five blade. Even though the five is getting through it, it's going really slow because it's still catching quite a few rats in there. So I am going to switch to a number um, seven to get underneath all those mats. So when you are using the clippers, especially under these armpits, you got to be very careful. So there's lots of skin, loose skin under there. Yeah, it kind of sticks out. And it's really easy to catch with those clippers, so you got to be very careful. And if you're not sure, the best is to use a number 10. Um, right now I'm using split tooth, and that's what I like to use all the time. But uh, the sh shorter the blade, the less likely it is to catch the skin there. And this first groom is just to take all the bulk off. Because once they give him his bath and a uh, blow dry there, I'm able to get uh, that second grooming. So I do trim him up twice. That's one that really cleans up everything. So I'm not too concerned if I don't get everything, you know, perfect. <laughs> Don't like his legs being done. A little ticklish, I guess. Okay, it's okay. Ready? Okay. get as much as I can here around the mass and then I'll use the number seven again to get those mats on the inner leg and armpit. Basically, I'm just using the number seven just to get under the mats, and then I switch back to the three and three quarter. Let's see, there's a little bit here, and I can also come back after, which I probably will with the scissors, just because the front legs are just a little sensitive. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It'll stand for me. Okay, it's still standing. It's okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. 
good boy. All right, I'm just going to use the scissors just to trim the end of that. We are keeping length, so I don't want to go right close up there, but I didn't want to trim off the bulk of it so the pea's not getting stuck to it. And then I'm going to trim up his bum area shorter. I'm going to use a number five. And we'll see how that goes. Usually the hair around the bum um, has curls in it, so it actually grows upwards and over. So even though it's a number five, it'll actually seem shorter than that. Just because it has so much curl in here. I guess not curl, but they kind of call it cowlicks, I guess. So I'll make sure it takes off a nice chunk. Up. You don't want to go too far out because you still want it to blend. Yeah. right under here with the same. Good boy. Oh, I'm just going to trim right around the bum with the scissors to get it really nice and close. Okay, good boy. Okay. So that's it for the clippers for now. I'm going to start with this back foot here. I do prefer to use scissors. Some groomers like to use um, clippers in between the pads here, but I find um, some dogs are just a little bit more uh, sensitive on their feet and they don't like their feet with the clippers in there. And I'm pretty certain he'll be one of them just because um, he doesn't even like his front leg being done. And I always find even if I do use the clippers in there, it doesn't get close enough. I can't really get in between the toes good enough, so I end up coming back with the scissors anyways. So this just keeps the dogs, for me, a little bit calmer. You know, it's not that they're enjoying their time in any case, but this just makes it a little less uncomfortable for them and that's my goal right. 
so then I just kind of am layering it backwards when I come up the foot there. So it doesn't go real short, but just kind of layers upwards so that it'll kind of blend with the other fur. And then while I'm here, I'm going to trim the nails. When I'm trimming the nails, basically trying to go even with the pads a little bit. And I push down with my thumb. Or extend it with my other finger there. Yeah, good boy. And there's no bleeding on that one, which um, it is okay if they do bleed. It's not uncommon. There's lots of nails. The dog's nails can be done every two to three weeks, so most likely they're not getting done in that time. So that quick, which is the part that bleeds, grows. So if you want to get your dogs healthy, back to a healthy length, what you do is you just cut them, get them trimmed up more regularly because that quick, when uh, when you cut the nails, it recedes, but it doesn't grow as fast as the nail. So um, if you're able to trim them up again, you're able to trim a little bit more than you would have if, it, if you let it grow for so long. And then that quick recedes to a nice healthy length course it'll always be there but at least it recedes to a healthier length where you can get the nails to a healthy length if that makes sense okay bud <laughs> you don't like that front foot, hey? So his front foot is a little bit more sensitive. I think both of his feet are. He is tugging a little bit on me. So when you're working with a dog with resistant feet, it takes a lot of hand strength because your hands get very sore. Um, especially if it's newer to you. Um, so you gotta kind of hang on. I use the kind of where the knuckle bone is there so that when they pull, I still have a good grip, but I let them pull and I just kind of wait till they stop pulling and then kind of go in between. Um, especially if you're first starting out, your hands will be a little bit sore for sure. But the best thing you can do is just hold on and let them move around if they are going to. Um, and then when they stop or give a little bit of a break, that's when you do some more. Because if they, uh, if you do let go every time they flail around, then they just learn that they need to flail around more and eventually you'll stop. So um, if you do need a break, you can always take a break, but make sure it's on your terms. So now he's gone, so then I release. I don't do it while he's flailing around. Other, otherwise, that just tells him, like I said, to flail around more, and then eventually she'll stop. So, ah, so. I'm now going to trim his face. I'm going to move this back so you can see. If he does like to lift his head a little bit. <laughs> oh, not buddy. Hey, hey. And I have been trimming for over 16 and a half years. So although it may look um, dangerous with the scissors, of course it is dangerous with scissors but um, when you first start out it is a little bit more nervous so you just go slow a little bites at a time there you go and it does take a long time the face and the feet and nails are always the hardest part to do and they take the longest time to learn how to do them <laughs> Usually, 
He's got a strong neck muscle there. All right, so what I'm doing is just holding from the back of his jawline and then the top of his head. And then when he relaxes, I kind of just go in there. But he does have a very strong head, neck muscle there. So when he pulls up, I'm not able to hold on. Now he's just kind of resting his head on me. There we go. Good boy. So it takes a lot of trial and error because what we may work for one dog not may not necessarily work for all dogs. So you just got to find um, what they'll be comfortable with and allow you to do because, um, like I said, even though I can hold on to most dogs from the bottom of the jawline, this guy, I cannot. So he's a little bit stronger in that area. And he's not like he's flailing around or anything, but I need to control him. He's just gently doing it, so I don't want to do a big restraint on him or anything to stress him out. So I just got to kind of figure out what will work. When you're doing around the ears, you want to make sure you know where the edge of that ear is. So I always use my thumb as a guide. And then around his mouth here, since he's panting, but you got to be careful because he is panting, so know where everything is. And remember, I've been doing it for several years, so it always looks easier when the groomers do it <laughs> on, the cha on the YouTube channels. But uh, it's because they've been doing it a long time. And uh, some of them are showing dogs that aren't resisting at all. He's still very good here, buddy, but um, not all dogs act the same as you are well aware. Okay, come on, turn your face back. Just politely resisting. I'm just kind of layering that mouth out. But being aware always where my scissor tips and edges are. So I'm not catching anything. Okay, so there's the face all done. Gonna use the scissors for in here. So you're gonna make sure you don't go straight in and just start trimming like that because those tips could be somewhere in there where you're not paying attention. So always be careful where the tips are. It's easy just to focus on the hair you're cutting, but 
but the tips, that's the important part because they can easily cut the skin. And by doing it this way, I'm kind of breaking it up. So I had a little break of the feet by doing the face in between and cutting around the head. Because usually the feet are a little bit more difficult as well. You know, you could also trim one foot to nail, then do some of the body. <laughs> you think they're quite it. So licking is not necessarily a term, you know, that he means that he's liking me. It just means he wants me to stop and he's trying to see if that will get me to stop. So again, you don't let go. Sometimes it can be a sign of aggression. Um, but by doing it for so long, you kind of learn to read the dogs of what Dog is meaning it as aggression, while some dogs are just wanting you to stop. I guess in either case, they want you to stop, but you can see him intently looking at me there. Okay, it's okay. One more. Nope, he didn't get it up. There, good boy. All right, so we're going to start the last foot, and this is the most, uh, one of the more difficult ones because the front legs he does not like. Be getting in there, so hopefully he'll let me get in there without too much. Okay, then. Boy, Buddy actually comes in between his groomings to get his nails done, so that's why they're so healthy. Not a big fan of getting his nails done, but they are a nice length, and that's why they don't bleed when I trim them off. So that's how you keep them nice and healthy. So he comes in about every three months to uh, have... Uh, his regular grooming, but then uh, comes in between to get his nails in. All right, so we are going to start with the bath here. Put that over there. Oh, and as I said that, as I picked them up here, he does have one nail bleeding. <laughs> of course. So let's put some stick dick powder on that one. So there's the last one. Yeah, the very, very last one. Yeah. Hey. 
And that one maybe, so I'll just put it on. So it all, all it takes is just uh, some styptic powder. And you dip them in that and hold the nail in there to make sure it has good contact. And uh, then you just uh, release. So, and it's good. I like to do, that's why I like to do the nails before the bath. In any case, so that if they do bleed, I can make sure I put that styptic powder on and have good contact with it. All right. I do have a sink stopper in the drain just so I can catch all that loose hair that comes. So when you do um, trim them up before the bath, um, a lot more hair will kind of come off the body of the dog, obviously. And it can clog up the sink for you or the tub, or just puts a lot of hair down there. So if you could get a sink stopper, that really will help your pipes not to get clogged up with a whole bunch of dog hair. That's how much hair was in there just from this guy. I try to keep the head to the last if I can. Helps them not shake as much. But of course he is still going to shake. I want to make sure I get all that soap residue or soap out. So it doesn't leave any residue, otherwise it will make it itchy when it dries, being on the skin. And he's pretty really good with his bath. So I'm just going to actually wipe up the table. While he's in the tub there. Yeah. 
just get his blood off there. So when I blow dry him, that doesn't get on his fur. Okay, come on. Okay, so we're going to go back to the table. All right, so we are going to start the blow drying process. Hey, hey, it's okay. So there we go. So we're going to get the, the three and three quarter inch blade back. And just go over his whole body again. You can see it kind of fluffed up a little bit with the blow dryer. I'll just lower this down for you. Then when I use the same blade again, you can still see it takes off quite a bit, but it really will give that nice clean finish look and blend it all together. And all dogs have a little bit of curl in them, even if their hair is straight like his, it still will kind of lift up again after that bath and blow dry.
But of course, with that short of a blow dry, he's definitely not dry yet. He's still damp. This video that I'm showing you is the full groom. There is no editing at all. I want people to see the full groom process of a dog. And sometimes comes up with a few surprises for me, but but it gets you the full idea of um, you know of what to expect when grooming a dog. I don't want to sugarcoat it, make it look easier than it is. But then it also can be done without any restraints. I've seen a few dogs that have come to me that have had uh, irreversible damage to their throats. And unfortunately, one of my client's dogs actually died because it didn't like its feet being touched and they kept trying to do the nails and it actually um, died. So I have sworn never to use them and that kind of sealed the deal for me. And it's not like dogs like this will be fine under that because they're not that resistant, but the ones that are resistant and jumping around, um, those are the ones that harm themselves. And you don't see those being filmed when the dog is really resistant and has the choker on. Anyways, that's just my two cents. And I am a one-man show here too, so if I do have a resistant dog, I don't have someone to help hold it either, so I've always learned just to do it in my own way. All right, so his fur is actually quite thick, so it's still quite a bit damp. It's okay. I'm just going to trim these little curls here at the bum. So that they blend a little better. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, good boy. All right, so I'm going to give him another quick blow dry, and then we'll be all done. Okay? Then when I blow dry again, I can just see, you know, some little things that come up. So I try to fix those up as well. You're never going to get it perfect um, because sometimes it lays flat. Sometimes it sticks up. You know, but it is good to try to get them a little bit drier because that'll give you the true, um, true cut, finished cut. And uh, right now it's sticking up, but it will lay back down. But this way I can try to get those ones that are sticking up.
It really won't take off too much. down for you. You can see right here just how much came off, which isn't very much, like I said. But I did see some on this shoulder that I want to get. There again, so it's not very much that comes off. It's got a little curl in it, so like I said, it'll lay down once it kind of dries a bit more. So there we go. So there is Buddy's full groom. So I hope you enjoyed it, and hope you'll check out my channel to see lots more videos of me grooming dogs from start to finish, but also quick little videos of how to focus in on of the ears or nails um, or dirty face or whatever the case may be. So I have some videos on that as well, and I've made some playlists for you to hopefully find them a little easier. So thanks for taking the time to watch. Um, hope you subscribe and check out my channel and um, please let me know what you think. And if there's something more I could do um, to help you learn a little bit better, or if there's something you'd like to see specifically, please uh, send me a message. Thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.